here we go. Welcome back to the Game Stars Podcast. And though, as always, I'm your host, Room Liberty, and with me is... Boaz Muhammad Yusuf. And today we've got some stuff. We've got Injustice 2 DLC. We've got New Heroes in For Honor. We've got Darksiders 3 announced. We've got Neo DLC, Free Patch, and Premium DLC. And then we've got the new JRPG, Code Vein, from the makers of God Eater. But before we get into that, let's talk about what we played this week. So... Take a guess. <laughs> more Persona. Uh, play, played some more Persona. Um, I'm getting getting close. I'm um, getting farther in the game. I think I'm approaching the 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 the, the uh, I want to say the third the third act. I guess you would mm-hmm. describe it of the game. So things are starting to heat up. There's things that they're starting to drop that I find are really cool. I did get to a part. I did get to a part in the story. Where I got a bit annoyed of a certain character's actions, and I was like, "For the love of God, what? Why? Why?" And but it was it was very minor, and it didn't like it wasn't like a whole sequence of events, you know, like um, it wasn't like an entire level of stupidity. Mm, but there was so a like part. Lightning. Yeah. Well, there. Sorry. So like lightning. Yeah, no, it wasn't like that. For me, it was just like, it was just something a character said where it's like, oh my god, come on. Come on, people are not this stupid. <laughs> you sure? Well, sometimes. <laughs> sure, 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 sure. I don't know. But it, it annoyed me slightly, but it didn't last that long. And then um, I'm in the new, I'm in my new dungeon, and it's it's pretty interesting. I did have a moment where I was trying out a new character, and I was like, oh, this new character's pretty interesting i like the move set but then i realized oh god this character is a glass cannon and i got my i got stomped by one of the mini bosses and i was like well i don't think i'm going to be able to use this character because holy crap does she does she fall down fast um but anyway uh so i played that and also i uh, oh i gotta talk about a funny story my own funny story <laughs> um so remember a while back, I was complaining about um, the um, pat uh, the the external hard drive system, right? And how it's like I bought this passport and it didn't connect, right? So yeah. I basically wasted purchasing a passport. So I'm looking into it a little bit more because I'm running out of space on my PS4 constantly, and yeah. I finally found an article that explained it a little bit more in detail, and I was like, really? So basically, this article explains that. You connect your passport, right? And it has to be USB 3. And I'm like, okay, so I connect my passport, the the one that I bought for the specific reason, and it's like USB 3. Okay. And then it says you need to format the, the, um, the, the passport. And I'm like, all right, well, I formatted it before, so it should be good. And it's like, no, 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 no. You have to format it with the PS4, even though it says your, your, the, the thing you've connected is not compatible. And is not connecting. So basically, even though you get a notification that says it hasn't connected, it actually has connected. It just hasn't been formatted. Uh, okay. So that, well, and that's what happens. Like every time I plugged it in, I was like assuming that I couldn't format it with the PS4 because it's like, oh, it's not compatible. But that's not the case. It was actually still connecting to the PS4. I just had to go digging in the menus a bit. So that was a little bit annoying, but... In the end, I got my passport to connect, so I got my extra storage space, so I was really happy about that. And uh, I downloaded, with this extra storage space, I downloaded Guilty Gear Excerpt, the demo. Oh, yeah. Uh, So I started playing that. Uh, I really like stylish mode because, oh boy, I'm not not good enough for normal. (laughs) Oh my god. (laughs) I still think we should play. I still think that we should play at some point. You know, uh, there's no online, right? Oh, there is, isn't? Ah, no. lame. That sucks. Yeah. Um, but I, I played it for a while. Um, what was the character I was playing? I was playing a lot of an Eno, I think. The, Eno. Yeah. That's not an easy character. Um, I think she's all. I think she. I, well, the thing I liked about her is that she has this like super crazy dash where she just flies across the screen. Yeah. I, I liked that about her. So I was having fun with her uh, for the most part. 
Uh, I haven't tried out a, 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 a lot of the other characters yet, but I tried a little bit of Biken. She was pretty cool. She's not a really difficult character. Yeah, she. That's the problem. That's the problem is is that like I feel like if I switch to a different character, it's gonna have to be like a like okay. Since you have more experience than me, what would you consider a easier to learn character? Kai, Soul, Sin. Those three. Okay. Pretty much only those three. <laughs> only those three? Okay. Um, Faust isn't too difficult. The doctor with the bag on his head. Um, uh, Benman? Elfeld's, Elfeld's, oh. Elfeld's not too bad at first. So Elfeld's really easy at first. And then when you, when you actually start le- trying to learn, when you, try to start, when you try to start optimizing Elfeld, then she becomes very difficult because she has a lot of character-specific stuff. It's a pain in the ass. Um, but yeah, the characters that I would recommend staying away from, Zato, don't touch Zato. Like okay. the, the, bla- the dude in all black with the little... That someone's the little guy. Don't touch him. Like, there's this thing that you have to do to play him called. I don't, I don't even know of negative edging. Yeah, that's a word. <laughs> do you, okay, okay, okay. Let's just assume you know. So, so negative edging. I don't know if it's a thing in other video games, but in fighting games, negative edging it means that when you press a button, pressing a button counts as the input for the button, but then releasing the button counts as another input, right? Ah, uh, okay, yeah. Yeah. So Zato, because Zato is two characters, it's Zato and then it's Eddie, the little guy. So how you control the little guy is you negative edge. So if you press X, you punch with Zato. If you release X, you punch with little Eddie. That sounds easy? Not <laughs> if really. That sounds, if that sounds easy and intuitive, then, then, then Zato is your man. But yeah, Zato is really hard. Venom is really hard. Um, um, Ram Lothal is really difficult. I think all the female characters. I can't think of a single one off the top of my head that's easy to play. It's not an easy game. But yeah, I like Soul, Sin, Kai are pretty straightforward. My. Pretty straightforward characters, and I'd recommend. I definitely recommend them. If I had to pick one of the three, I'd pick Sin mm-hmm. because Sin is probably the best out of all three. So he's easy to play, and on top of that, he's really good. So then the fact that he's good also makes him even easier to play, right? Yeah, so, exactly. I, but but Kai got because you know this is a new version, so you know things are still up in the air. But Kai got really good in the new version too. So and there's a lot of Kai's in Ottawa. So um, so if you wanted to learn Kai, there'd be a lot of people you can learn from. Um, uh, but yeah, I'd recommend one of those three. I would definitely. But but here's the thing: is if you want to learn, if you really like the way a specific character plays, then I recommend learning that character, no matter how hard they are to play. Yeah, um, yeah I, I recommend just 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 gutting it out and learning that. So if you really like the way Eno plays, we have one of the best Enos in Canada, actually, in Ottawa. So oh, yeah? so you would have you definitely have someone to and he's he's really he's a really nice guy he's really helpful and i'm sure he'd be excited because no one else plays you know because you know it's so goddamn hard to play so he'd probably be really excited to have someone else to like teach she's she's really good and she um her game plan that's that's one thing and you know that let me not get too in depth because we have a bunch of other stuff her <laughs> game plan is is yeah you got me talking about guilty gear that that was your first mistake her <laughs> game plan is very easy to 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 follow you knock people down you make them block the note and then you make them guess yeah <laughs> exactly and you just cycle it to each other yeah because once they block the note then you just make them guess high or low knock them down and just you know yeah. Rinse and repeat. Yeah. Yeah, that's I, like I was able to figure that out relatively quickly, in which I was like, okay, this note seems to be like very freaking important. And, the note's uh, really, really, because it stays even if she gets hit, right? So you yeah. can like cover yourself. You can you can throw the note and then you can attack, and if they jab you, the note will still hit them, and it's like three hits. So you can easily attack and then still get a combo. She's really good. Mm. She's really good. Um, yeah. But yeah. yeah, um, but yeah, yeah. So I've been playing that, and I, I will admit though, like the the thing is that like I I know my I know my strengths and my weaknesses, and I'm like I am glad that stylish mode kind of makes it like like literally it's like okay you you just want to have fun, <laughs> I'm like yeah I'd like to have fun, and I'm like okay just play stylish mode, and then when you really want to take this seriously, you can go with the technical. And I'm like, okay. Because the thing was is that, like, I was trying, I was trying to play technical for a while, and I was just, like, I was just not having fun, because it was, like... The barrier of entry is really high. It's right? really, really high. And that's why I switched to stylish, and I was just like, okay. I realized that the game is giving me a huge advantage in several different ways, but I'm having fun. So I was like, you know what? Exactly. Um, stylish mode, it, it gives you an advantage in the, in, the, in the sense that you can, okay, and for those that don't know, stylish mode, it's like auto combo mode in mm-hmm. Guilty Gear. It, it combos for you, it, um, it does a bunch of other things for you, I don't know all of it, but um, 
but and it, it makes a lot of your inputs really easy. Like Potemkin, for example, his command grab is um, it's a, it's a complex input, so it can be very hard to do. But in stylish mode, it's one button, so 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 there's that. But you take more damage in stylish mode, and there's a bunch of other things you cannot do. You can't tech throws, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. You cannot green block, um, or you can't insta block. One or the other. So there's there's a there's there are downsides, but yeah, like for someone who just started playing, yeah, stylish mode all the way. I fully recommend it because yeah. because you know you can learn how the game plays, and then you can start learning how to play your character. Yeah, so, exactly. Because the game is overwhelming. Like I, I cannot say this enough. It's a very overwhelming game. You're playing. You play like you get into a game against Zato, and you're dealing with two two characters. You know, yeah. like you have to you have to be watching out for two different characters, which is something you never have to deal with in other fighting games. So yeah. Mm. Yeah, you know, you play against the Ramlethal, and she has her character, and then she sets swords across the screen, and it's it's it can be a lot. So a lot. so yeah, yeah, I I definitely recommend stylish mode um, okay. for when you start playing, and uh, you know I commend them for putting stylish mode in the game because like I said last week with Marvel, um, mm -hmm. I don't think there's anything wrong with making a game more accessible so long as it's not at the cost yeah. of complexity. Well, I, I really like the fact that it's just a mode. It's like literally, okay, this is how the game is supposed to be played, like the, the legit version that's meant for Evo and meant for the professionals. And this is the vo this is this is the mode or like the button that you hit when it's like, all right, I'm not really good at fighting games, but I do like playing with my friends. You know, I'm gonna put it onto stylish mode. So like that's what I this was the biggest thing where I found like I had a lot of fun with Persona 4 Ultimax because of the auto combo system because i was like okay i can still kind of learn and get the um hey, it's as alarm clock. yeah it's my my trusty watch um i could still kind of learn the basic mechanics but i could still pull off a combo just by mashing a button so i don't know like if it, it, it fits more my play style than anything um because like i just i just don't ha i don't feel like i have the time to commit to the hard like i like it like if if i if i was to go full on like just try and learn the the game i would have to just pick one game you know and i don't think i could do that because there's there's too many games to play and i want to play them all <laughs> but uh but yeah no guilty gear was a lot of fun uh, a lot of fun that's basically what i played this week what about you Fawaz? Okay, so um, I'm going to start with something a little weird. I um, one of the things that I quote unquote played this week was a movie, and you know, I'll, you know, I'll, 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 I'll explain, I'll explain why I'm, I'm talking about this on the podcast. So I don't know if you've seen the movie Drive, or if you've heard of it, Drive with Ryan Gosling. Ooh, ooh, yeah, 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 yeah I've seen Drive. Yeah, yeah. So I, um, I was reading up on some shit about like, uh, what's this thing called? About uh, Hotline Miami, and then one thing that I saw was that. The game was inspired by that movie. I mean, very. There's a slight inspiration, you know. It's but not more, like, more, more, more like feel, like the feel of Hotline Miami and the feel of Drive are kind of similar. To yeah, extent. very similar, actually. Because yeah. you know, it's, it's like Drive's about a nameless protagonist who goes around doing jobs for faceless, um, uh, face, face, faceless clients, and you know, sim it's. I don't know if it's actually set in the 80s, but it has a very 80s vibe to it, mm -hmm. and the soundtrack is is integrated into the movie uh, in a very similar similar way. So yeah, if you're a big fan of Hotline Miami, like I am, and you haven't seen Drive yet, I fully recommend it. It was a really fun movie. I enjoyed it. The soundtrack was dope. Mm -hmm. So so yeah, check that out. In regards to what I actually played this week, so it was funny. Um. On Monday, I spent the whole of Monday. I'm waiting for the Guilty Gear demo to come out. I'm waiting for it. I keep checking. I keep checking. Then it finally comes out, and then I'm sitting there. And I'm waiting for it to download. It took me like three hours, right? So right. it finishes downloading, and then I boot the game up, and then I realize that uh, there's no online, and I I don't know any of the new combos, and then the, the mission mode isn't available. Mm -hmm. So then I was like, huh, I can't actually do anything right now. So then I shut the <laughs> so then I shut the demo yeah. down. <laughs> And I went out and bought Persona Five. So hey. yeah, there you go. There you go. I um, I'm officially I've officially started playing Persona Five. Um, so Apple, sorry. I'm just saying you're in. You're in now. I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> so yeah, I'm about ten hours in, or as we like to say on this podcast, uh, one order eighteen eighty six. And it's, <laughs> it's 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 a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun so far. I'll uh, I'll get through the puzzle. 
Uh, and then I do have some some negatives, but like mm. the first thing is that this this game just oozes style. This is a stylish game. Like the menu, the opening theme, like the the, the dungeons, the costumes, the mm-hmm. like the scene. Wait, the the scene at the end when you're getting your experience and stuff. Everything oh, about yeah. this game, the 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 shops, everything about this game is just stylish. Like that's the only word I can think of. It is so <laughs> stylish and it's like cool very jazzy so so that's pretty cool um the game is getting like so much better you know it's yeah. it's so refreshing when you play a game when you play a sequel to a game and then they give you more of the same you know they, they give you that but then they mm-hmm. they just fix all those little little things that you didn't even realize were a problem like the fact that they added fast travel yeah. um, in the school and i was like oh my god god bless you you know yeah the, so the was, fast travel was, is a game changer like it saves so much time yeah so i'm trying to get to the fourth floor i don't have to actually walk up all the stairs anymore i could just like fast travel to the fourth floor mm-hmm. you know i could just fast travel to the shops and then the shops you can look at the the map and it can tell you where all your people are so you don't have to be running around the city trying to figure out where yosuke is because you want to complete his social link <laughs> and then you know in regards to the, to the s-links like you mentioned mm-hmm. and now they've actually given you a reason it's called confidence in this game but i'm never going to call it confidence so, it's gonna S-Links. Be S-Links. It's so yeah let's just let's just keep it rolling it so yeah i love the fact that every single s-link gives you some kind of bonuses you know because like in the in the in the previous game it was only your party members uh, so the other S-Links, you just did it because you enjoyed their stories. But now, even the people that you don't like, you mm-hmm. can do the S-Links because you get some kind of benefit. I just got the benefit with that idiot, the guy in pink, the one that you're living with. Um, so now oh, I can make really? coffee. So and I was you? like, cool, cool. I did the S-Link with the doctor. I was mm-hmm. trying to get I was trying to get some, but, you know, she just gave me some drugs. And I was like, okay, well, I guess this works too. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, and then and then I moved up uh, Ryuji? Ryuji, Ryuji, Ryuji. Yeah, Ryuji's S Link uh, a little bit, and yeah, he's pretty cool. And um, um, so yeah, all, all, all in all, uh, oh, another thing is that the actual dungeons, like they just put so much more, they just put a lot more effort into the mm-hmm. dungeons this time around. Because in Persona Four, and I'm assuming in three and two and one, the dungeons were very called, you could were very copy paste, you know, like yeah. every level, every because because. Uh, the, every uh, layer of the dungeon looked the same as the last one. Every floor, there we go, of the dungeon looked relatively the same. You get lost very easily because all the corridors look the same and stuff. I've only done one dungeon so far, but I'm going to mm. assume that they're all going to follow suit. So that they actually them. feel like dungeons. They're you know, all like very, every... very different in how you approach them, style and visual presentation. Like Yeah, are. every room feels unique. It's very easy to, like, backtrack and to not get lost because like i said every room feels unique um mm-hmm. the dungeon th- this first one had a couple of cool mechanics so i'm assuming that the later ones are going to have as well so hats off to them for that and then finally the boss battles i beat my first boss yeah. and they also they fleshed that shit out too you know yeah. like um you have the main boss but then there's also like a little like side quest type thing you can do in the middle of the boss battle that i thought was cool mm-hmm. you know and you know it's not like it's it's if you succeed, it makes the boss easier. But then, it, but then while you are trying to do it, you're fighting the boss uh, with one fewer person. Mm-hmm. So there's a risk reward involved. And if you're just like a high enough level, you can just be like, well, screw that. I'm just gonna beat the shit out of this boss normally. Yeah. So you hats off to them for that. Um, all in all, you know, so far so good. I'm definitely enjoying mm-hmm. it. A few minor gripes. Um, mm-hmm. uh, the first one is the setting. Like it's so stupid. So um, I mean, this happens in the first like five minutes so uh, you know if, if, if you consider this a spoiler i apologize the but setting? The, the, what do you this, mean by this the, oh you mean the setup oh, yeah okay. the main character he says he sent away to this school because dig this okay he, he he walks down the street he sees this dude trying to rape this woman then he like knocks the dude down and then the dude gets injured and dude's like haha i'm going to sue and then he sues you and then that's why you have a criminal record and i'm like what world do these people live in that's not how this works that's not how any of this works and then you know so... you get to school and everybody's like that. Oh my god, he's such a he's, he's such a juvenile delinquent, <laughs> such a criminal. And I'm like, what? What about the guy that was trying to rape a woman? Just no, um, no. I want to point out a couple things about that. Well, one, I will say this is that that scene is actually going to get fleshed out even more. So it will start. Yeah, I thought will, as much. Yeah, like it will make a lot more sense, and like. It, like usually, if it was just Joe Schmo, that wouldn't make any sense. But 
it very quickly it becomes apparent that oh this guy has a lot of power in a lot of different areas of the government and the town and the city and he can he seems like that kind of person that he can just make people disappear so <laughs> Yeah, and you know, like, um, cause, cause they showed the the scene happen as like a cutscene, then they have you play out the scene. And when you're playing out the scene, he mentioned something about why would you people in this country just listen to me or something like that. So then I was like, okay, 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 maybe there's a little more to this than they've showed so far. But when they showed that, I was like, really, guys? Really? But yeah, That's no, the the, the initial your initial thought is like, this is a little ridiculous. But then yeah, just no, no, a little, just a little. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the other the other um issue I have with the game, and this is going to tie into it, like. Uh, a little bit of news um, you know is the game is censored so you cannot share anything in the game at oh, all okay. like you yeah. can't take screenshots you can't record you can't you, you are allowed to stream the, stream the game but you can't stream past a certain date and you can't stream for too many hours so they've, they're pretty much keeping the entire game under they, they want to keep the entire game under wraps now obviously this isn't going to stop people who have like capture cards i can find yeah. footage of the entire game online already this game's mm -hmm. been out in japan since september so yeah. so then i'm like okay so what's the point of all of this you know other than pissing off your consumers um uh, and and you know like every time i'm playing the game and someone says something funny i don't take a screen cap and send it to tanner i'm like oh wait i can't because these idiots have decided that oh uh... in the, in the, and, and their reasoning is also so stupid they're like that oh we don't want anyone to spoil the game i'm like you guys aren't the only single player story based game in the entire in the entire world last i checked maybe i'm wrong but and you know like there's a bunch of really cool single player story based games that i haven't played yet and i don't and people are allowed to share footage and i haven't run into any issues with samurai jack not a video game but samurai jack you know like the season has been going on and somehow i've managed to avoid spoilers <laughs> oh my god you look at that you know you guys wow i wish i had i wish i had you luck. Sure spoilers on facebook and if they were there's nothing you could do about it anyway so like what is the point of all of this other than to piss uh... people off no, I, 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 I agree with you for the most part, but it's like, well, one thing I will say is that, boy, you dodged a bullet because I had the exact opposite experience with Samurai Jack. I had every fucking thing spoiled. Every fucking thing. So, I was a little bit livid because of that. Um, the thing about it, at least from, like, since we're going into it a little bit, um is like i understand where they're coming from to a certain extent they're like okay we've been working on this game for nine years and like because the story is such a pivotal and i'm not i'm not saying that's like you're like oh like you know there yeah you are right there's other single player experiences that you know like are obviously you can that are probably good and just as just as fun but the story in persona is such a vital component I can understand them, like, not wanting people to see the crazy twists that are coming up in the later half of the game. Because I've gotten to them. I've gotten to these later twists. And as much as I hate it, I hate the fact that, like, yes, I wish I could just send you a screenshot of a funny clip. I wish I could just, you know, record a boss, you know, with the, the, the PS4 thing. Um, the fact that... Like, I would be, if, if, if I went online and the last half of the game was just like, because the problem is, is that I know people, they don't, there's going to be people that on YouTube that they don't know how to name a video. And if they're going to put a very pivotal scene from a game, I would love them to be a little more vague instead of just saying exactly what that scene is. You know, that, that makes sense, except for the simple fact that the last half of the game is online. Well, no, I haven't seen it. Because you haven't been searching for it, right? Oh, so, you're, so it's just online, period. Okay. Yeah, um, like, but, like, but for me, because here's the thing, like, it's like, I want, I would, I want, I want the game not to be spoiled. That's the problem. Is that, I, yeah, that's, okay. that's, that's the thing that I really hate how I feel about this whole situation, because... On the, uh, half of me is like, I absolutely agree with you. The fact that they're censoring the game and that you can't stream and you can't screenshot and you can't do this and you can't do that is kind of bullshit. And I, I agree with you 100%. But the, the, but the other half of me is that, I guess it's because with me, spoilers, I care more about spoilers more than other people. I care about spoilers. Me and someone stopped being friends because he spoiled X-Men 3. Of all shitty movies, he spoiled <laughs> X-Men 3 for me. 
and and I was like, you know, we we, we can't be cool over that. I, I I hate spoilers. But here's my mm. question to you. Okay. Did the last Guardian get spoiled for you? Um, it did. Parts of it. Wow, sucks to be you. Yeah, but yeah, like, yeah. yeah you started to yes, see my points. <laughs> but like, okay, here's here's the thing though. Is that like I said? Okay, they've done all of this. They've pissed all these people off. Yet the stuff is still on there. So what have they actually done besides? pissing people off you know if this is a situation where they actually took every single bit of footage of persona 5 off the internet then at the very least i can say i can be like okay you know what i don't i don't agree with what they're doing but at the very least it's effective right yeah. but here it's not effective it, the only thing it's done is piss people off because like i said the spoilers are still up there online it's just made it it just made it harder for people like me and you to post anything at all, to share with our friends. That's all it's done. Because, like, right mm. now, like, I got stuck in this dungeon, and I just went online, and I find and I found footage. Just easy. Because mm. it's, at the end of the day, like, you're not going to stop people from uploading footage of your game. Oh, yeah, you know? absolutely, yeah. Like, like So, I'm like, if you can't stop people from uploading footage of your game, why are you, why are you then just making it harder? Why are you just then just making it annoying, you know? Like, and, and, and then this is the other part, right? Okay, yeah, sure, spoilers suck. 100 percent mm. they spoil someone spoiled the okay no not someone i spoiled um the big twist of persona 4 for myself by mistake mm -hmm. you know but at the end of the day i still put 150 hours into persona 4 so it's like that you know even if even if something in persona 5 got spoiled sure i'd be disappointed but i still play the game and i still enjoyed the game right so so i'm like i'm like and here's the thing you know, like the Persona Four ending, it's not ending. Wasn't the ending that got spoiled? It was, it was who the, it was who the killer was that mm -hmm. that got spoiled for me. Um, that got spoiled, but it was like because because what happened was that I was watching a bunch of gameplay videos, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah, then you yeah, know, yeah. one of the recommended videos had the villain <laughs> in it, and I was like, oh, okay. And you know, like in that situation, and that's the thing, right? YouTube isn't going to recommend Persona Five videos to me if I don't watch Persona Five videos, which is why I stopped watching Persona Five videos so that YouTube wouldn't recommend. I know, them. but for me, well, the problem was is that I had like Persona Five videos because I was watching the trailer on repeat <laughs> before the game came out. So it's like, uh, I mean, like uh, honestly, you're you are a hundred percent right. Um, I I don't know. It's it's one of those things where it's like. Because like I've had a lot of experience, a lot of experiences in which there's certain because there's certain things like certain pieces of media in which having a particular aspect of the story or the the plot points or a character shift or a tone shift being spoiled can ruin the magic of be of that discovery oh, yeah. of it of it of uh, happening to you firsthand. Um, oh yeah, but. But yeah, I, I feel... Well, the one thing is that I, I know this is probably going to happen because basically this is kind of like the the um, the mentality where like, okay, the game just came out and um, we are essentially... I, I feel like this is not going to be forever. Like this kind of weird like censorship mentality of like we're trying to protect people from spoilers is not going to be forever with the game. I feel like there's going to be a step like a statue of limitations kind of thing where it's like give it a year or give it like give it like honestly i'm pretty sure by the end of the year they're going to probably just say fuck it like so you mean eight months from now it well sorry so you mean eight months from now probably because you also have to understand for us if their mentality if their mentality is is that we don't want people to get spoiled in the game and what it, and like for example like there's going to be people that they're going to buy the game in november or they or they bought it at launch but they only played up to the first dungeon and then they had to leave for f six months i don't know like i said i'm on the fence about this because it's like i i agree with you that it's bullshit but my my heart can't take spoilers so it's like I'm torn. It's like my heart is getting ripped in all these different directions, and I don't know how to feel. How am I supposed to feel? So, for here's, so, so here's my question to you, right? Like I said, the stuff is already online. So how would you feel if, in spite of all this bullshit, mm -hmm. it still got spoiled? So then you know you can't record any footage, you can't take any pictures, and then in spite of all of this, you're still sitting there with the ending spoiled for you. Um. Well, one. Okay. If I you you, you want me to be perfectly honest, yeah. I probably wouldn't be sending you screenshots of the game <laughs> but that's besides the point you get what i you get what I'm i saying. get what you mean like honestly i'm agreeing with you 
but that's that's why I that's why I hate this stance. I hate where I I feel about this. That's why I hate it. I hate it more than anything because it's like I can't I can't be with you a hundred percent. I really wish I could. Like I agree with you. Uh, like uh, you are not wrong, but this is more of an emotional thing, and, and that and that's that's the problem. That's the problem with me. And maybe I'm just being a stupid idiot. Who knows? Who knows? Wouldn't be the first time on this podcast. <laughs> um, but I don't know. That's sort of my stance on this. Um, but anyway, uh, was there anything else you wanted to say about Persona before we move on? No, or? no fun stuff, fun stuff, fun stuff. Um, Lift the Vine. Uh, I, wait, wait. Who is it again? Is it? It's, it's, it's Atlas. Arc. It's Atlas. Atlas. It's not, it's Atlas. not Atlas. Arc System. Never... Arc System is... Ugh. I could never get this right. We do this every single time. Atlas, Atlas, Atlas. Yeah. So yeah, listen to goddamn by Atlas, okay? Please. Um, help a brother out. Yeah. Lift, uh, lift the ban in a month after I've beaten the game. <laughs> 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 anyway, but yeah, no good stuff. So you want to get into some news? Yeah, let's get into some news. So, uh, first bit of news, to the surprise of absolutely no one, um, mm-hmm. the first DLC character, of Injustice 2, have been revealed and um hi sorry real quick i forgot to mention you guys thought that because injustice 2 was out that we were done with our weekly no, injustice no, 2 no, segment. of course not we have well, to well jokes on you because <laughs> there's there's if i'm counting correctly nine dlc characters coming so we're going to be talking about injustice 2 for a very long time so anyway, the trailer got revealed and it's pretty cool it's very atmospheric and then the three characters are revealed as starfire sub-zero and red hood which is a nice mix you know, um, it's it's a very you know like um, g- in general, I was never happy when they did um, guest mm-hmm. characters because I'm like that. There's so many DC characters that aren't going to make the cuts that it, it yeah. felt bad that um, they were wasting a spot. Well, not wasting a spot. That they were giving a spot to a character who has their own game already. Right. Uh, but you know, whatever. It is what it is. So yeah, we're getting Sub Zero, we're getting Starfire, and we're getting Red Hood. I'm just glad Red Hood didn't make it into the base game. That was rumored that he was going to be one of the characters, and you know how I feel about Batman characters. Um, Starfire looks cool, hmm. and uh, what's also interesting is that at the very end of the trailer, they teased six other characters. Yeah. Now, two of the silhouettes, they showed a bunch of silhouettes. Two of the silhouettes are very, 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 very. Very obvious. One is riding uh, Raiden, and the other is Black Manta. Period. Like, if these are not those two characters, I will yeah. officially quit from this podcast. Straight up, quote <laughs> me on this. If Raiden and Black Manta are not in just this two, <laughs> my days on this podcast are numbered. Okay. <laughs> um, the other four silhouettes are like way too vague. People have speculated who they are, but you can't tell. You know, like um, there's. A lot of them are just blobs, but yeah, um, we do know. So we know five of the DLC characters now, uh, which is it's not a bad mix. Although, like I said, it's another Mortal Kombat character, so that mm-hmm. is kind of disappointing. Uh, you know, the question isn't going to make it in, but Raiden and Sub Zero are. So, yeah. and then like more of the new gods. You know, Orion isn't making it in. Um, Constantine's not making it in, but uh, you know, we I don't know about Constantine yet. You know, but whatever. That's besides the point. Yeah, the DLC. The characters look cool. We haven't seen any gameplay of them yet, nor do we have a release date. But but yeah, looks cool. I mean, it looks it looks cool. I'm glad to see Starfire because I'm all about the Teen Titans. And uh, although I thought it was funny, where it's like, part of me it's like, okay, we've got we've got Captain Freeze or Captain Ice or whatever Captain Freeze, and we've got Sub Zero. Where is Doctor Freeze? Where's oh, Captain? yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, it's, it's Captain Cold, Mr. Freeze, and yeah, yeah, so we have Captain Cold in the game, we have Sub-Zero, and yeah, where's Mr. Freeze? Just round it all Just out. Just round I off mean, all the ice obviously... heroes. <laughs> yeah, oh, and then Killer Frost, let's add Killer Frost in there too. Now, obviously, I don't want Mr. Freeze, because that would be another Batman character. Uh, one thing, though, that's causing a little bit of controversy is that these characters have been announced on the 5th of May, mm-hmm. and the game isn't out until the 16th i think mm-hmm. so a, a lot of people are upset because they're like oh my god you're announcing dlc and your game isn't even out yet yeah may 16th um yeah a game isn't isn't even out yeah where do you stand on that i mean this is like for me it's kind of like it's a little bit weird but also it's like if the dlc was already planned to begin with i don't really see much point in just like 
waiting, you know? Yeah. I mean, like, I can understand, like, somebody going, like, why wasn't in the base game, and I, I get that. Um, it'd be more, I would be more annoyed if this was, like, an expansion was announced. Like, like, like if Dark Souls 3 came out, and then The Ashes of Dell, a trailer for it, came out five days before the launch... I would be a little bit annoyed about that because that's like a whole expansion kind of thing. Whereas this is just mm. new characters that have already been planned. I'm like, okay, well, well whatever. It doesn't it doesn't really bother me. Not really. Yeah. For me, it comes down to one thing and one thing only. And this is what I always say when I get into arguments with people about DLC. Mm -hmm. Are you, do you feel that the base game was worth your money? Yeah. Injustice 2, I'm not going to buy this game. Let's just keep it real. But Injustice mm -hmm. 2 has 29 characters at launch. That is a lot of characters for the base version, for the base game, in addition yeah. to, like, you know, full-on story mode, online, all that other stuff, right? So if, if I, I, I was going to like that, oh, you know, by the way, these characters are coming a little bit after launch, and keep in mind, these characters are just announced. They aren't even out yet. This, this is a situation where they released the, <laughs> Imagine they released the DLC characters of yeah. the store <laughs> before the game launched. <laughs> that would be DJ, okay? Okay. Um, yeah. But yeah, because a lot of people, they feel like, you know, people have this thing at the back of their mind where it's like, that, oh, these characters were held back because, you know, they want to make extra money off of them. And you mm -hmm. know what? If they were held back, then, like, that's fine. Because if here's the thing, and this, this is what I always argue about, right? Mm -hmm. If I come up to you, you, you like, okay, see, I should have, let's, let's, use, let's use the Order 1886 for an example, right? I should have okay. the Order 1886 a lot. But here's yeah. the thing. They came out and they were like, this game is going to be 10 hours long. Mm -hmm. If you feel six, this is worth your $60 or 80 if you live in Canada, mm -hmm. then you buy our game, you know? Yeah. If I paid $80 for the order 1886 because I felt like that, like it was a good, it was a good, it was worth, if I felt like the order 18, 10 hours was worth $80 and I paid $80 for it and then they released five extra, five hours of DLC after for an extra 20 bucks, mm -hmm. I have no right to complain because like, you know, if they held that, because you you because they told they no, told no, Kiss no, no. okay 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 I'm getting what you're saying because it's basically like out the gate they told you what the game is going to be how much stuff out the is gate going... they told you what the game was going to be if mm -hmm. if Injustice Two had been like there's going to be 36 characters at launch and then we're coming here and it's like okay it's only 29 pay us extra money for the extra six mm -hmm. then wait 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 wait. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For the extra seven. Sorry, my mouth was off there. <laughs> then you could be like that. Oh my God, they held this stuff back. But no, out the gate they were like, okay, it's twenty nine characters. Okay, out the gate they didn't say shit. But you know they were like, okay, here's twenty nine characters. But from day one, actually, they've actually they've always said that it's going to be DLC characters. So you know everybody knew this was going to be the case. And even if they didn't say, it, everybody knew this was going to be the case. This is what Nether Realm Studio does. Mm -hmm. They give you extra characters after the game launches. So if you feel like okay, this game was worth my $60 or 80 if you live in Canada. Yeah. Then why are you complaining about extra stuff? Why are you complaining about dessert? This is what I always argue about. You go to a restaurant, you pay for a full steak, you know? You get the steak, you read the menu, they're like, the steak comes with steak and fries. You buy it, you get steak and fries. And they're like, oh, you do want to pay extra for dessert. You're like, fuck you guys! Why was the dessert included in the meal? <laughs> like, you know? Well, for me, it's, it's also kind of like, there's always going to be people that they have a mentality that all DLC is bad. Like, any any piece of DLC whatsoever will always be bad no matter what, no matter yeah. what the quality is. Yeah. And it's kind of like, I, I can understand that mentality, but it's like, no. I like, I understand where people are coming from with that mentality, but I'm also like, okay, look, like, there is, like, limiting your thoughts about how, what DLC can be and the quality of DLC, I think, is not a good thing to do. No, I, I, I don't understand that. I don't agree with that mindset. Blood and Wine was some of the best, was some of the most exactly. fun I've had with a video game in a very long time, you know? And this is coming, you know, and I enjoyed the main game, but Blood and Wine was beautiful. It was amazing. So, you know, the, mm -hmm. you know, I, 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 I don't understand. I don't agree with that uh, mindset. I mean, I do understand. One thing I do understand is that a lot of video game developers handle DLC wrong. Yeah. So I can 
appreciate the fact that a lot of people have just put a negative they just have a negative stigma mm -hmm. around the word well that's yeah that's that's, that's that's more of what i meant is that it's essentially yeah there is that negative stigma around dlc as even a word or a concept that because yeah because so many developers have released dlc and it's been kind of shit it you usually even if they've really planned out the dlc really well it's really really great quality there's always going to be people that are like oh this again yeah or developers launch incomplete games and then mm -hmm. make you buy the complete you know there's a, like here's the thing like for me I do, I'm not denying that some developers hold back on content, right? Yeah. But for me, like, right out the gate, okay, look at, look at Battlefront. No, 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 Battlefield. No, Battlefront, there we go. Like, why? Why would you do this to us, EA? <laughs> uh. <laughs> so look at Battlefront, right? I looked at the game, and I was like, this game is not worth my money. And then, you know, they released the rest of the game as DLC, and I was like, yep, still not worth my money. So, yeah. you know, like, for me, I'm like that, yes, I can definitely I, I can definitely understand that stigma. But for me, if you bought a game that you thought was incomplete, but you still mm -hmm. paid money for it, you have no one but yourself to blame when they come out and they charge you they charge you extra for the rest of the game. You, yeah. Like, that's just where I stand on it, you know? Um, so, you know, like, I do my research on every game I buy. You know me. Like, I don't mess around. I do my research on every game I buy. And if I'm like, okay, I feel like this game is worth the full $80, then I buy it. And if they offer me anything extra, then it's extra, you know? But as long as you've come to terms with the fact that this game is worth my money, then nothing else should matter as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, yeah. I, I, okay. I, I... <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I, I agree with you. With the, like, I do. I do. It's just funny. It's just funny that it's like, yeah, it's, it's just so much argument over DLC. And it's so like, this is, this is like, and this is such like a small little part of the game, especially for right. Justice 2's case. I'm just like, ugh. But anyway. Anyway, I still think that what they showed was pretty cool. All things yeah, it's actually, I think what they showed was pretty cool. What, uh, something else that's kind of cool is that, wow, that, that, that segue was terrible. You're losing <laughs> your touch, to, man. I need to work on <laughs> I need to work on those. But yeah, speaking of DLC, um, For Honor announced its uh, second season. So the season is called uh, uh, Shadow and Might. And yeah. in uh, they're also adding two new characters to the game as part of the second season. The Shinobi mm -hmm. and the Centurion. Uh, now I just want to throw I just want to throw something out there, okay? The Centurion is supposed to be a member of the Knights, right? Yeah. Why is he a gladiator? Um, because, yeah, so basically, well, the Centurion is, like, is meant to be kind of Rome-themed. Yeah. And, what well, because most people associate, you know, Rome with gladiators. I mean, like, the whole thing where he's doing the thumb thing, that's, that's straight up a gladiator thing. Yeah, but, no, what I but mean, it's, though, is but like, nice. but, it's, but, yeah, no, well, well, yeah, no, I, because the problem is, is that gladiators aren't exactly Vikings, like yeah well gladiate okay okay then don't put a gladiator in your game okay no no i'm not fighting you on that but on that part it's like but it's like okay let's see let's okay think of the board meetings like okay we want to put centurions in the game all right well obviously they're not samurai so we're not going to put them in there okay good we got that out of the way and now it's just vikings or or knights and when you look at the design aesthetic of a centurion and I'm not just thinking just a gladiator. Like, a centurion can also be a lot of other things. Like, I think of a Roman knight. Um, it, I, I feel like it, it falls more into the knight's category. It's still weird, though. It is still absolutely weird. Okay, let me put it this way, right? Mm -hmm. if, they, if they put a Hun in the game and they put him under the samurai, <laughs> would you still be... <laughs> Are you, a Hun <laughs> under, under the samurai... Uh, honestly, if they did that, I would be like, yeah, well, you kind of screwed yourself by only having three types of factions. <laughs> yeah, because, okay, and, and the funny thing is that Huns, I think, are actually even closer to Samurai than yeah. a Centurion is to a Knight. Like, yeah, no, like... a Hun would be make more more sense. No, so, yeah, yeah. It is, it's weird. It's weird. <laughs> like, but, but, okay, 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 okay. Uh, let's, let's, not, let's, not, let's not stick to this point for too long. They look cool, both of them. <laughs> the Shinobi... <laughs> Looks kind of interesting, and um, you know, Centurion. Historical inaccuracy aside, mm -hmm. us, sorry, forget historical. Geographic inaccuracy aside, the Centurion does look kind of cool. He has a lot of like uh, hype up. Uh, he, 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 
he, he looks like you know he, he looks like a gladiator you know he plays yeah. the crowd and stuff like that but yeah the shinobi looks looks badass you know they have like a teleportation i want to i want to say um uh he also he's, he's got these cool weapons it's not the kurasigama specific yeah. it's like a kurasi I, I don't know what the actual word is um but it looks like a kurasigama except instead of having like a a scythe on one hand and a ball on the other hand it's just two sides so that's pretty cool mm. um I, I didn't see any like wall running i'm, I'm actually watching the trailer right now <laughs> um he, he looks i mean obviously he looks very agile he teleports a little bit looks like mm. he's gonna he's gonna be a relatively high mobility character i'm still i i i'm wondering if he can wall run no i don't see any wall running. i don't think so, so. i i don't think I don't think many of the characters can roll around in that game. Just no, because of the design. no, no, no. But uh, but yeah, it's pretty cool. And then uh, the other thing, uh, did they add anything else with the second season? Season oh yeah, the second season begins on the sixteenth of May. Both these heroes will be available for free to season pass holders. Well, they better be, yeah. and then become available for other players to purchase on May twenty third. Okay, so yeah, you can buy them with in game cash. But you know, you uh, if you have season pass, you just get them. It's like Street Fighter Five. It's uh, well, it's, honestly, well, honestly, if I'm being, it's more like the structure that they set up with Rainbow Six Siege. It, yeah, it seems yeah. like very similar to that, where it's like, all right, these characters are you can purchase them with in-game currency, or you can just buy them. Um, yeah. So, but yeah, uh, I mean, honestly, I'm I, I think I think these two characters look cool, and I'm glad that they were fixing the problems with the currency um, that they originally had. Which I think well, what are they big... fixing? I, I, I must have missed that part. Well, we uh, talked about it a while ago, but the, essentially the drop rate of um, oh yeah of steel, which is what you use to buy stuff in the game, was very low, and uh, they they were fixed. They finally fixed that, and it's a lot better than what it used to be. But overall, cool stuff. Stuff. Yeah. Oh, you're also getting two new maps, and the, and the new mm. maps are free for everyone. Your yes. Free season yes. Two stars, Forge, and Temple Garden. Um, and they're rolling out an update that will increase the maximum gear score. That means absolutely nothing to me. I just gear stats, system balance, and introduces an epic gear rarity level. Um. So yeah, they're just balancing the game. Word on the street is that the online has gotten a lot better. So um. So that's good. Um. All in all, I I I, I could probably see myself buying this game in like a year. Mm -hmm. Um. You know, and and for me, it's not even because you know some people. Some people just wait for like the game of the year edition to come out, and I I, I can understand and I respect that. Um, because you know some people just want to pay one, uh, fee and get mm -hmm. everything. But for me, it's not even that. Is that you know when this game was announced right out the gate, I I I suspected that it would. I suspected that the game was gonna come out. It would be a very fun game with a lot of balance issues. Yeah. And because I was like, it's Ubisoft. Ubisoft couldn't balance shit. So um, <clears throat> when the game came out and it was exactly that, I was like, okay, cool. I'll just wait. I'll just wait a little while. Wait for them to iron out all the balance issues, all the server issues, all that stuff. Uh, do all the growing pains. This is also a brand new like concept, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So there's still gonna be like some stuff that they need to fix. Like when the game first launched, people just used to run all the time, and so they've been looking for ways to fix that. And, uh, yeah, so, you know, in about a year, and, you know, I'm not trying to be facetious here, I'm not trying to be, like, an asshole, I'm just keeping it real, you know, like, in, like, a year, I think the game is going to be, like, a really, really good game, mm -hmm. and I'll probably pick it up then, and, uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much, it, which, you know, it's, it's, I really do want to support this game, because even though it's flawed, even though there's, there's a lot of flaws with the game, it's something mm -hmm. new, it's a new IP, and yeah. it's a new genre, you know, people people be like, yeah, there have been games like this before. Yes, they have. This is the highest profile game like this that we've ever had in, like, the past yeah, two decades. Yeah, so, sure. so, yeah, you know, I want to support this game. The game sold really well. So, you know, this isn't a situation where me waiting for a year is going to, like, kill the franchise. But I want to support <laughs> this game. I want to show Ubisoft that, you know, there is a market for this. And, um, you know, like, uh, and it also just looks like a good bit of fun. So, yeah, hats off to them. I'm looking forward to seeing how the game grows. I'm looking forward to seeing more heroes. One person did make a comment in it because someone... The top comments pretty much uh, reflected my thoughts. Knights, Samurai, and Vikings. Oh, and this one gladiator dude. And then this one dude, he had a pretty good rebuttal. He's like, so in a game where Knights, Vikings, and Samurai are all fighting somehow on the same battlefield, the Roman Centurion is where you draw the line. Yeah, running. yeah, I was gonna make, I was gonna, I was gonna make a point about that as we were talking about it. It's like, yeah, the the setup is already so ridiculous at this point. You know what? I can't even argue with, I can't argue with that logic. Um, you know what? You're right. You're right. Like this, this, 
this game has a very, very ridiculous premise. So, mm. yeah, let's not start drawing the line here. <laughs> but, yeah, good shit, good shit, good shit. Speaking of good shit... Darksiders 3 got Darksiders announced. Darksiders 3. I did not see this coming. I did not see this coming. When I saw I that headline, I was dead. like, really? Yeah, I thought it was... Yeah, I was pretty sure Darksiders was dead at this point because it's, it's been five years since Darksiders 2 came out. And, like, you know, there was a whole issue where, like, um, THQ, the publishers of Darksiders, they got liquidated. Mm -hmm. uh, that's probably the wrong word. They fell apart. And yeah. um, the the developer um, also kind of fell apart. So there was a bunch of, like, legal shit going on with, like, THQ and regional yeah. games. It's, it's, it's one of the reasons why was that game called. Um, that really shitty... Uh, game that came out on the Wii with the protagonist that had a bunch of tattoos on his body. Oh, on um, oh, what was the name of that? Ah, oh, shit. Uh, Devil's Third. Devil's yes. Third, Devil's Third, yeah. It's the, re it's the same reason why, it's why Devil's Third was in, like, um, development hell for so long. Because when it was announced, it was under THQ, and then some shit happened. So, yeah, like, I, I yeah. thought Darksiders was done. But, you know, I'm glad to hear that they're back. Um, it's being yeah. developed by Gunfire Games, who... Is new, I think. I don't. I don't think they have anything, anything under their, uh, anything under their belts. Um, Apparently, so the, the development team is a mix of like new people and some of the old people who worked on the first two games. So that probably. makes it a little bit more promising, I guess. Yes, 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 yes. Um, they they worked. Some of them worked. They didn't work on the old game, but they worked on the definitive. Which is a stupid name, by the way. The definitive edition of Darksiders Two. <laughs> Um, that's such a stupid name. Um, uh, so, yeah, they don't have any, like, big games under their belt. This is their biggest game so far. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and, uh, yeah, there's probably, I, like, I, I can't find anything about it, but I wouldn't be surprised if some members of the old team weren't on this, weren't on this, uh, right now. Uh, in regards to the game itself, so, going, you know, continuing with the trend, they were going with a different horseman, we're going with, um, Strife. Uh, yeah. Strife, so we're playing Strife, who's a woman, you know, mm -hmm. so, um... We were we're keeping with the with the recent trend of more uh, female protagonists. No fury, fury, fury. God damn it, for what? Um, although it's fury, a fury and strife the same thing. Whatever, it's it's irrelevant. Um, uh, so yeah, yes, yeah. So we're going with fury now. We had war, death, fury, and then I think famine's the fourth one. Um, uh, whatever. I'm just like I'm just di di digressing. The game looks like the game looks like fun. It's pretty interesting because the first Darksiders yeah. was um, was this thing called? It was criticized and um, it was lauded and criticized for being very very similar to Metroidvania games of old. Yeah. So it's pretty fitting that now your protagonist actually just uses a whip. Just, just like, uses okay, a whip. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but just straight up Castlevania now. Yeah. <laughs> All in all, it looks cool. The um, the one of the issues that the games had that doesn't look like they fixed. Now, to be fair, it's also um, what's this thing called? It's also pre-alpha footage, but it doesn't look like they fixed it yet. Yeah. Is that they had big open worlds that were very very sparsely populated, and the first gameplay that they showed reflected this. Um, yeah, which kind of sucks. Yeah, I mean, like that's always seemed to be like a dark siders thing. To be honest, like I think I think at this point it's like the people. The people who really, really like Dark Siders, they don't really care about that. This is true. This but, is true. Um, but I mean, uh, like honestly, it's still I'm still kind of interested in this because of the fact that the fact that I was almost certain that we were never going to see another Dark Siders game because of all the shit that happened with THQ. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm actually kind of excited to see how this game turns out for sure. Yeah, same here. Because um, also when they announced the first Dark Siders, you know, I was really disappointed that we only got to play War. Um, and then you know, like they also they, they had some some artwork of the other of the other three horsemen, mm -hmm. and I was excited. I was like, wow, all the horsemen look so cool. But I was like, you know, whenever I'm going to get to play any of these any of these people, you know. And here we are. The mm -hmm. third game is coming out. We finally get to play um, Fury. All that's left now is Strife. Although after playing Furies, because Strife, um, based on the artwork, Strife is a gunslinger. Yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, to go from using a guy with a broadsword to a guy with a scythe to a chick with a whip to then go to a gunslinger, uh, that sounds kind of undeveloping, but I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm putting the, I'm putting the horseman before the horse here. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Anyway, we don't have a release date. It's tentatively 2018 right now. Yeah. Consoles are pretty much what you expect. PS4. Oh, wait, actually, any word on, on Switch? Um. Oh, this coming to the Switch? Yeah. Not that I'm aware of. I, I'm usually up to date on my Switch news. Uh, I haven't really seen anything gets anything like that get announced. Um, oh. I know Battle Chasers is coming to the Switch. I know... Um, um, what else is coming to the Switch? Apparently, there's rumors that there's a possible Dark Souls three like trilogy coming to the Switch, which I oh, find okay. is crazy. But yeah, but you know, this is this is besides the uh, the car. But yeah, points. no, but uh, yeah, yeah. No yeah. announcement of Dark Souls three for the Switch. Oh, and uh, real quick, just a quick um, a quick point about the actual plots of the game. It follows mm -hmm. the protagonist Fury, rider of the Black Horse, sister horseman of the of the sister horse man of the apocalypse in her quest to destroy the seven deadly sins so the seven deadly sins are going to be enemies in this game it's funny because i always mix up the seven deadly sins and the four horsemen of the apocalypse like i mix some of them up uh yeah because some of the horsemen are named after um they have similar like you know wrath and war um so when i first saw her, i was like oh it's lost and i was like wait a minute <laughs> yeah no because the, the, the horseman is it's war famine uh Death. Death, and then the fourth one uh, switches. Um, in this case, we have we have um, um, fury. Yeah. Uh, um, sometimes it's pestilence. Uh, pestilence. Yeah, that's the other one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's they, what they, it's, they, that's they, what it's supposed ones, to be. The, yeah. The two that are always there are war and death. Yeah. Because yeah. right now they switched out farming and pestilence for wrath and strife, which yeah. for fury and strife, which are roughly similar if you ask me, but. <laughs> You know, I, I'm no I'm no English major, so maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, but yeah, yeah, Dark Side is three, coming 2018. Looking forward to seeing more. And uh, next up, we've got uh, Neo DLC, uh, uh, a patch and the actual big official expansion coming out. Yeah, yeah. So we go. So first of all, we've got a free patch, uh, patch 1.7. It adds PVP. Uh, uh, 1v1 and 2v2 online PvP modes. Mm -hmm. It also added because so in Neo you have the ability to transform your character. You can just make him look like the lot of characters that are in the game. You can make him look like the villain. You can make him look like uh, you know a bunch of the other characters. You could never make him look like any other women though. Mm -hmm. I would have just added that in. Now now there's um now there's female transformations. They um they. they... <sighs> That's about it, actually. Um, yeah, like, the, there's not a whole lot with the patch. I mean, they added, they obviously they added the PvP stuff and that, but, I mean, like, it's free. Like, it's a free patch. It's still a good yeah. thing to add. And the more juicier stuff obviously comes from, like, um, the, the actual expansion, because um, it's a whole new area of fighting, a bunch of new creatures, some new weapons. There's this really big great sword katana thing that uh, he's wielding in one of the trailers. And uh, what appears to be a new spear type weapon um, that's also pretty cool. New armor, stuff like that. You know, the basic yeah. gambit of stuff that you add when you, in the expansion. There's some new story cutscenes and stuff like that. I kind of yeah. I kind of laughed a bit because um, one of the characters was named Lady Maria, and I just couldn't stop. I couldn't stop thinking about Bloodborne because Bloodborne also had a DLC expansion with a character named Lady Maria. Yeah. So. Yeah. So you know we're. Uh... They might as well, uh, you know. Hey, you know they're, they're stealing so much from from software. Might as well just go for, just keep, just keep stealing. Just go for uh, broke. Yeah, overall, it looks cool. Unfortunately, we couldn't find like a con, a comprehensive list of new weapons, new spirits, all that stuff. But we do know that there will be new weapons. There will be new spirit animal thingies. Um, mm -hmm. I forget what they're called. A new boss is uh, there's a pretty creepy centipede like boss that they show up in the trailer and um, yeah there's that great sword yeah kat katana type thing that they showed but unfortunately like I said yes I think um, I, I, uh, we we don't have like official confirmation on new on on how many new actually new weapons they also showed up their cat the cat is yeah. a spirit that you can have now there's also like a dragon. And dude type spirit and there's new mm -hmm. characters uh hey lady maria um yeah there's new <laughs> characters too um, um i forget their names but a lot of them are based off like historical um uh figures and then there's new enemy types you know it's just basic shit you expect from a dlc which i'm pretty much repeating exactly what kind of just said so i'm not entirely sure why i'm talking right now. um all in all it looks cool looks fun I haven't, I haven't beaten the main game yet, so obviously this hasn't even crossed my radar. 
Um, but but I'll definitely be picking it up. You know, yeah. it looks it looks like a good bit of uh, a nice a nice chunk of content. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like that. That's the thing is, I'm very curious. Well, I'm actually more curious to see your opinion when, if because I'm assuming you'll probably get this. Is that I'm very curious to see your opinion on this DLC. Obviously, compared to like the Dark Souls DLC, and then we can compare notes and see what we think. Uh, I, that would be, be fun. Fair, maybe I'm not the person to be asking because I hate. I've never been a fan of. Dark well, Souls. no, I would be. Well, I would. I because like I would. I would tell you, okay, this is what this, this is what this DLC had, and I would be curious to see what this DLC brings to the table for Neo. Yeah. Um, but that yeah, that that be yeah. I um I I can agree. I can agree on that on that on that regard. That'd but, be fun. Uh, uh, but yeah, Neo Neo DLC. Good shit. Um, I haven't gotten any reviews. I haven't, I haven't been able to find a lot of reviews yet. But um, all in all, um, the reception seems to be positive. But I also haven't heard a lot of complaints. So that's yeah. usually, usually that's usually a good sign. That's usually a good sign. If people if people aren't saying anything, then the odds are they enjoy they are enjoying your uh, product. <laughs> that's yeah, a, that's <laughs> <good. laughs> which is weird. But uh, so finally, in in um, to wrap things up, we've mm -hmm. got a brand new uh, new IP from Namco. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, it's it's uh, it's an open it's an RPG from the people who made um, God Eater. Uh, what? God Eater. Yes, God Eater. Thank you. Yeah. It's called Go Code Vein, and you are playing pretty much a vampire. You know, they use some yeah. weird like terminology to describe them but they're vampires okay yeah. like guys why do we have to overcomplicate everything uh, the trailer looks, looks cool um uh very edgy i did find it weird that you know they have this like edgy setting it's like a post-apocalyptic setting and the characters are wearing this like really metal costumes and then you look at the characters and they, they look like a typical anime i i was going to say that because it's a little weird because like yeah there's these cthulhu monsters coming from the deep and you know, like it's just like this constant battle over and over and over again, and like you know, this the blood all over the place, and then it cuts to the 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 guy, and everything about him except his face matches the aesthetic, and it's just like that's, like I get it, cause it's like it's that's it's you know it's their game and they want it, the anime style, and that was kind of a thing that God Eater had that was a little bit weird too, is that uh, it had it had anime style characters, but the world itself was more like dark and realistic but it kind of yeah, cla it clashes a bit it does clash a it, bit it, it did clash for me because like you could take these characters faces and you could put them in like a slice of life anime and no one would bat an eyelid right so i'm like uh, i, I would love to see that character in a slice of life anime. <laughs> <laughs> the armor and everything in terms of actual gameplay, we don't know a, a whole lot. It's just going to be a hack and slash. They haven't announced any consoles. We, we have a release window, which is 2018. So it's a very broad window. Mm. Uh, it's not like a hole. Uh, <laughs> it's not like that's supposed to be a window. Um, but uh, but overall, it looks pretty cool. Very. It does have um, some soulsy elements to it. Yeah. And it, um, I think when they when they they announced the game, they teased it with. With the with the with the phrase "prepared to dine," so <laughs> that's so, pretty cool. You know, I saw you know, people. I, I saw people in the comments calling it "anime souls." So <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're, they're not hiding their influence. Um, um, but I mean, it looks different enough. This is this is yeah it's, it's, yeah, yeah. I'm scrolling through comments. It's like Weep Souls, uh, <laughs> Dark Souls, Tokyo Ghoul Edition, yeah. Anime Souls. Um, well, there's some good ones in there. Um, but honestly, like, from what I've seen, this so... will do, pulls out Estes. <laughs> I was gonna say, like, honestly, from what I've seen so far, it does look like it could have a lot of potential. Um, and, uh, from what I've heard, the God Eater games are pretty good, so I'm very curious to see, um, them try this type of game. Um, I just, I just thought, I think, I think that's really, that's really about it. Like, I think it, it looks cool and there's a lot of potential. I just thought it was really weird that the clash of, uh, the anime style face with everything else was a bit bizarre. Okay, so I'm good to it wasn't just me because, yeah, when I, when I saw it, I was like, what? You know, like, they, they, they showed the art, they showed, because they first announced it with, like, an animated, um, an animated uh, trailer, and the animated trailer was very dark and everything. 
and then and and then you know they show like some artwork and it's all dark and then they finally finally show us an image of the heroes and it's like what that's that's, that's... Uh, honestly that's just a japan thing that happens yeah, a lot there's a lot there's a lot of anime japanese games that come out in which the character models they look they, like you said they look like they could be in your typical slice of life anime but then the, everything else the setting is all like a completely different style like it's it's bizarre it is very very bizarre um but overall cool stuff cool stuff but uh, before we end things up we've got a question of the day from the lovely j streets shout yeah, out to j streets and he's asking us gaming on a budget what budget or discounted games would you recommend for a budget gamer? Well, the first thing I'd recommend is that you're Hog. Okay, okay, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But, uh, uh, do you want to take first swing? I'll take first swing. Okay. So, console gaming, I would not recommend at all if you're a budget gamer. At the very least, um, up-to-date console gaming, I would not recommend it at all. It's just not cheap. Like, there's mm. just no way to, to dance around the facts. You know, we're just talking about, I mean, half of the game's... Like, three-quarters of the games we spoke about on this podcast have DLC coming out for them, you know? Um, you know, so so I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend it at all. I would recommend you I would recommend you shell out a lot of money, buy yourself a PC, and then go to Steam. Yeah, buy. yeah, I was going to say that. I would say, um, because if, you, if, if you're going, if you're like, Hard Lance, I want to do gaming on a budget, I want to save as much money as possible, you just got to go Steam. Like you that's that's it. and you don't necessarily need to go full crazy on um on a gaming PC um because there's a lot of games on Steam that are really really good but they don't require a whole lot of like processing power Very like good you know points. like games like Binding of Isaac you know um, Transistor um, there's a bunch of other games uh, Bastion is another good one that I can think of that is probably like uh, that are relatively cheap now because they're older games um, but yeah like if you just if you want to if you want to get games on a budget then yeah Steam sales are your friend because those games will go down to under $10 they'll go down to like 5 or $3 I bought uh, Star Wars um, what was the, the, the Bioware game uh, Star Wars The Old Republic or uh, Knight, sorry, Knights of the Old Republic. I bought that for two dollars, and that's a pretty yeah. good. That's a pretty good game, all things considered. So, like that, that's really. It, it's sort of like the best way to do it is that you want to look for games that one like that are not going to be stressing your heart. Sorry, your processing or require a really big uh, video card, unless you want to spend the money. Like if you if you want to spend the money on making a really really good PC then you can get some really cheap games off Steam. But uh, it really depends on what kind of games you want as a gaming on a budget. Because the reality of the situation is, is that gaming on a budget means you're probably going to be playing a lot of older games. You're going to be playing games that came out like two years ago or games that came out three years ago. Um, yeah. Because if you, cause if you want if you want games that are just just came out, then there's no way to get them on a budget unless you find them on ebay for some ridiculous price or something like that like that's that's the only that's the that is the best way um to save money i guess from yeah. my perspective yeah or you just stay one generation behind so you know you buy a ps3 now you probably get a ps3 for like 150 bucks maybe even less you can yeah. get like um ps3 games for like under 10 bucks you can get really good ps3 games for really cheap now so so that, that's what i would recommend if you are going to uh, game on a budget you aren't going to be playing modern you're, you're not going to be playing reset games which which i mean like gaming is just not a cheap hobby mm -hmm. you know it's 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 simply not uh, um uh you know i joke uh i me and jason joke a lot that we don't even want to know how much money we put into hearthstone but it's it's a simple truth if i actually sat down and i did the math i probably spent like 300 dollars on that game that's a free-to-play game yeah. um yeah you know i i I, I paid what four fifty for my console four fifty alone for the console I'm paying fifty dollars a year for PlayStation Plus I'm paying almost a hundred dollars per game mm -hmm. so it's just not a cheap cheap hobby you know yeah. so if you want to do it on a budget you, you can't be modern you gotta go back you gotta go you back know, PS3 maybe even PS2 um, you know or or you gotta get yourself a PC you don't have to get a, you know I was wrong about that you don't need a powerful PC get yourself a PC and just go on Steam. You know, like uh, um, people joke about how Steam, the issue with Steam is that it, it 
reduces the value of video games. What I do agree is that when you sell that many video games that cheap, because you I mean, talk to anyone that uses Steam, and they all tell you the same thing. Oh, my God, I've got like 20 games in my backlog that I just need to find time to play. Because when game when you're selling games for like three dollars, there's no value. You don't mm-hmm. you don't value what you buy, right? I mean, I've done it before. I bought a game for three dollars. I played it for like an hour, and I was like, oh. <laughs> I guess that's an interesting mentality. Yeah, it's like even though the game that you just bought for three dollars is really really good, I guess it depends. It depends sometimes because like I bought Bastion for like three seventy five, and I fucking love that game. And I was like, that was the best three dollars I've spent in a goddamn long time. I, 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 um, I guess I should clarify. I didn't mean that you you don't uh, value the game. I mean, you don't put the time... Because there's, there's some oh, games that okay. require a time investment, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, you're yeah. saying you're saying from the perspective, like, if I spend $60 on a game, I'm probably going to put a lot of effort in making sure that it's worth the $60 rather exactly, than a game. Exactly, okay, right? Yeah. You know, because, for example, Persona 4. Persona 4, it took me seven hours to break down the wall with Persona 4. Mm-hmm. You know, like... I, I had to play and play and play and play, and I finally broke through the wall, and I was like, wow, this game is actually a lot of fun, but, you know, it took me some time. If I had gone Persona 4 for free, I mean, I probably would have still tried because I was on the Vita, I didn't have a whole lot of other stuff to play, but then that's where the issue comes from, right, with Steam. And, you know, I'm not saying that this is like an issue as in like an actual issue, just a minor thing, right? Mm-hmm. When you, you know, when you have so many cheap games, you, you don't have time to put in seven hours to break through the wall of one game. You can't sit down for seven hours playing a game you aren't enjoying just in case it gets better. Same with Bloodborne, right? It took me like three months to get into Bloodborne. And I got into it and I beat it in like three days, you know? But, <laughs> but like, I, I absolutely love the game. If they announce a Bloodborne 2, you know, I'm buying that day one. Yeah. But if, if I had multiple other games at the time, I probably wouldn't have done it. So that is one thing that people do talk about with Steam, that it does kind of, the, it reduces the value of games. But mm-hmm. that is like another discussion all, entirely. All, all together. Get Steam. If you are trying to save money, you got to get on Steam. You got to get on yeah. Steam. It's just, it's just the best way to do it, I think, in the end. Uh, but really, really good question, Jay Streets. And if uh, you've got a question for us, don't forget to leave it in the comment section. And make sure, and we'll make sure to answer it in the next podcast. And so, as always, this was your host, Room Liberty, and... Oh, as Muhammad Yusuf. And we'll see you guys next time. Take care.